Hey everybody, welcome back to Under the Loop. My name is Marco Nicolini, shooting on behalf of Grand Caliber. Today we have four beautiful pieces to talk about, ranging from this Gerard Perigo all the way to this Vacheron. First watch we're gonna talk about today is going to be the Gerard Perigo Loretta. And I have to say, this is probably, no, I will say this. This is the coolest one they make. Out of all the ones that you can buy that are skeleton, this to me is the one to go for. And I'll tell you why. It is just absolutely amazing to hold in person. It's very slick in design. And another thing that's really cool about it, you just get this really amazing black ceramic case, bracelet, and black dial on contrast with the skeletonized uh, movement, which just really gives this watch so much character. You know, this watch comes in rose gold, stainless steel, and black ceramic, which to me, the best one is the black ceramic. The rose gold's gonna cost you a little bit more money, but this is a lot more watch for the money in my opinion, because you can get anything in rose gold these days. So how cool is it to get something in black ceramic and have a fully blacked out watch? I've been on the hunt myself for a fully blacked out watch, and so far I chose to go with the Omega Dark Side of the Moon Apollo 8, but if I had a little bit more money to throw towards just having a black watch, this would 100% be it. You know, just a quick market price on something like this, you're really gonna roughly spend between 30 to $34,000 for these still hold, holding strong at that price point. As you guys know, Gerard Perigos were very hyped up last year and the year before that, they were kind of on the rise um, just with you know collectors taking notice of the brand. There's a lot of talk about how these look very similar to the AP Open Worked 15407s and the other skeleton variants of the Royal Oaks. Far better price point to get into a skeleton watch and still retain a Swiss made manufactured watch that isn't too far off the beaten path. It doesn't feel too light, doesn't feel too heavy either being that it's ceramic. It's gonna be very, very scratch resistant. So that's a huge plus about this watch. So when you're looking into something like this, you can be rest assured you can wear the crap out of it and really not scratch it too bad. Now they do collect you know, a fair share of um, hairline scratches, but it takes a really long time to get there with these watches. So you're gonna wear it for a very long time before you really start noticing the wear and tear on it. Whereas if it was stainless steel, rose gold, or any other material, you would notice it right away. So the movement on this watch is going to be automatic with manual wind, obviously you can manually wind it while it's automatic. So you can you can see the rotor just kind of moving around in there. I kind of like that, but some people might not. If it were me personally, when it comes to skeletonized watches, I just prefer that they, just do it with the rotor. Just make it, uh, just make it a manual wind. And the reason I say that is because you can just start seeing more of the inner workings of everything around. Because the rotor kind of covers things up. So if you want to see one part, you kind of have to move it around, get it away from there. But that's just my preference. Who knows? Maybe if I owned one, maybe I'll just have my watchmaker take out the rotor and <laughs> just keep it manual wound. Uh, but don't do that. When you wind them, you can actually see the mainspring in there get tightened up, which looks really really cool. Um, that gives you a very, very strong open work vibe there because you just see all the inner workings. For this watch particularly, it's not a tourbillon movement, but it looks kind of similar to a tourbillon. When you look at the balance, they kind of set it up in a way where you can see it right at the 12, which is a great placement in my opinion for this watch because right underneath the logo of the watch, you see the escapement which and you see the balance. So that's really cool. Um, I think they did a really, really good job. The details on this watch are very, very, very sharp when you're under the loop. So when you look at this watch in very close detail, you can see that everything is really crispy, everything is really sharp, very beautifully polished. You know, nothing is really left untouched with this watch. Back in 2016, Gerard Perigo decided to really revamp this uh, line of the Laredos. And what they did was they simply went all, they went all out with the model. All across the board, you can find Laredos with very colorful dials, kind of like the Rolex OPs. You can find them skeletonized, you can find them two-tone, solid gold with many, many dial variations, which is really cool because you really have the capability of picking really what you like with this model. So if you decide you like the teal or Tiffany blue style dials, you can go find one in the Loretto collection because they have them available. And you know, they really did well with their revamp in my opinion. This one particular being ceramic. Again, that's a huge step from 1975 when they first introduced this watch to where they've evolved it in today. So the price point might be a little scary, simply being that it's 30,000, but keep in mind this watch was much, much higher a couple years ago when things were just going crazy in the watch world. Who knows, maybe down the road it could go back to those price points, we never know. You know, this is just a watch that if you have some fun money to spend on something just outside of the box, something out of the norm, this is the go-to watch for that in my opinion, simply because you get so much 
watch look for the money. You gotta remember, the next thing up from this watch is a black ceramic AP skeleton, and you can only imagine what that costs. It's gonna be, this is probably the taxes on that purchase. So, <laughs> so a very, very good watch to start off with, and you know, don't be too scared about it. I think it's a great part, uh, I think it's a great price point. And I've seen price points as high as 40K plus for these in, you know, in today's market. But, you know, if you're gonna buy one of these, try to be in the, you know, lower 30s if you're gonna try to pick one up. You know, if you're really, if you're gonna be smart about that purchase. Of course, anything less is just extra points for you, but that's going to wrap it up for the Gerard Perigo Loretto skeleton. You guys have known I've been a little bit on a Speedmaster kick, not, you know, not out of coincidence. We just haven't had a lot of them around. And again, I'm a huge fan of Speedmasters. You guys know that. This one right here definitely takes a cake as far as the ones I've seen lately. And this is going to be the Moonshine Gold Omega Speedmaster that is recently released that ADs have just been sold out of. And the watch has just been going absolute crazy with the market price roughly around thirty-seven to $40,000. This one is brand new, complete 2023. If you're interested, let me know because it is available. And I must say it is probably one of the sexiest Omegas you're going to find out there simply because it just gives you uh, almost John Mayer-like vibes. Definitely gives you strong rose gold olive day date vibes. But let's talk about the metal. It kind of looks like rose gold, but it kind of looks like yellow gold. So in fact, it is called Moonshine Gold. And what's interesting about this watch is the gold consists 75% gold, 14.5% silver, and it is roughly 7% copper and 1% palladium. So it's got a you know, it's kind of quite mixed up in there. What Omega's trying to prevent is having the gold tarnish over time and just become, you know, develop any type of weird patina per se. But, you know, overall, they really did it to kind of really retain that look for the long term. So only time will tell. They released this watch back in 2022. And they released it among a couple of other watches, just really stood out. The watch is a little bit bigger than your typical Speedmaster. This one does come in at 42 millimeters. So it does wear a little larger. As you can see on the wrist, it is... Uh, it's not too small. I mean, it feels kind of big. It almost feels as big as the Omega uh, Apollo 8 that I wear sometimes. But this one is definitely cool. What stands out is that the green isn't as green as you would imagine. You know, it's not like a very strong green like a Hulk. It's not a strong green like an Olive Dating. It's a very pale, laid back green that really almost kind of comes off as like almost black or grayish in some lighting. But it's very much green but it's hard to see exactly. It doesn't, it's not gonna stand out, you know, like the, like a John Mayer Daytona or something where it just pops. So one thing I want you guys to take notice on when you're looking at this watch is it does have a very strong 3D effect on the dial and that is because it is a step dial and that is paying homage to Omega's history. And one thing you're gonna notice that are that the sub dials are recessed as well as the outer tracks of the dial, which just gives it a very elegant appearance. You know, like when you look at this overall, it really plays with the light and being that the sub dials and the outer track of the dial recess, it really, really grabs your attention when you look at that dial because it just gives it a really nice appearance and a very much a uh, hand finished watch look, which just gives it that really rich contrast. So again, can't say enough about this watch. It's absolutely beautiful. One thing you'll notice about this watch is that, it, I mean, obviously being a chronograph, uh, you do have the 30 minute counter at the three o'clock and the 12 hour counter at the six o'clock. And the tachometer goes up to 500, which is pretty high. Most Daytonas I see go up to 400. So I guess you got that one up on Rolex Omega. So I see you guys there. I see what you're doing. So the movement itself, if you look at the back, it does have a clear back exhibition uh, exhibition case back, which you can really just see how beautiful that movement is. And I'll have to say Omega really does wonders for their movements. I think they do look incredible, definitely on par with um, the quality of Rolex, the quality of even such, you know, Vacherons that I've seen and some other brands that are very high end out there. They look pretty much on par. There's nothing really lacking about the movement. You know, it is a 3861. It beats at 21,600 beats per hour with a 50 hour power reserve. So, you know, I'll say Rolex wins the cake there because now they are operating at 72 hour power reserve with their new automatic chronograph movement. To kind of wrap this watch up, I mean, you really have a great piece here with a lot of historical significance, especially this bracelet, as you can see. The bracelet itself kind of goes back to what they were doing in the 80s and 90s. They really kept their heritage true with this piece. They didn't do anything anything too, too crazy uh, other than, you know, put it out there with that green dial. Now, the other uh, watch that they came out with that's very similar, you know, which came out with this release 
is the Champagne Panda doll, which if you have time, go look it up. It is absolutely phenomenal. I personally like the Champagne Panda doll more. I'm not crazy about the green because the green here just looks very, very deep in color. It's very dark. The tone of the green is very like, very much the darkest olive in the bunch. You know, out of all the olive colored dolls out there, this one is probably the darkest I've seen. So beautiful watch. Can't say enough good things about this piece. You know, I think this is a piece that any collector who can hold on for the long term will do great with. That's going to definitely be, you know, substantially more money down the road, in my opinion, because as you know, these watches have been aging so well. Another thing to notate is a lot of these Omegas, believe it or not, have been going up a lot over the years. So everything we've been moving has been noticeably more expensive than say two, three, four years ago. So, and that's kind of true with a lot of watches, but so again, that's a good thing for Omega. So if we haven't talked about the market price, the market price on the watch right now is between 35 to 40,000 and the secondary market, and that's for brand new. So pre-owned, you might even find them a little cheaper. The next watch we're gonna talk about is the Vacheron Constantine Overseas 49150 chronograph. One thing that stood out to me right away is it does not have an open case back which to me it's cool too, because I don't always have to have an open case back on my watches. And this one is also very, you know, interesting in a lot of other ways is you definitely get that very noticeable, distinct Vacheron Constantine look. There's so many homages to their logo all over the whole watch. That's kind of how Vacheron does it. They kind of put their stamp everywhere they don't they don't miss a beat on the case back you'll see they have the famous ship on the back um, which you know just sailing there sailing away i'm a big guy on dials like i love dials to really stand out and this dial right here does stand out but it's kind of interesting as it kind of bugs me in a sense because it's not that asymmetrical meaning you have one extra large chrono and then the other two are the same size i know a lot of brands do that i know they're into that for me i don't necessarily care for that to me it just kind of takes away from the watch and then obviously the date at the 12 i do like the date i will say this the date at the 12 is the perfect spot for a chronograph to have a date function a lot of them end up putting it right there you know such as ap and some other brands and for whatever reason that's just a weird, awkward place to put it. You're putting it kind of in the middle of the action with the chronograph. So I will say Vacheron did an incredible job keeping it there at the 12 for this particular model. The bracelet, as you know, that very famous Vacheron style bracelet, which definitely stands out and definitely gives people, you know, the know that this is a Vacheron after all. Now I will say one thing I don't like is they put the screws on every single link. I think if you stopped it, say about there, and then just made these all solid, I think we would have been very pleased with that. This side of the watch is very aesthetically pleasing, where this is just interrupting me. <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, it kind of just gives me um, brain fog when I look at it. I'm like, why did they do that? Another thing to notate about this watch is it does utilize a butterfly clasp which is nice and convenient. I do like the way these wear with that butterfly clasp. And you're probably asking yourself, what is the price of one of these? And roughly, you're gonna find them between $26,000 to $28,000, roughly complete box and papers. This particular one is 2014, it is complete. We are asking 28,000. That's gonna wrap it up for this Vacheron. So if you guys like it, let me know. And let me know in the comments below so far, which one has been your favorite watch. We have one more to look at. For the last watch we're gonna talk about is the 1159 Code. This is a very simple, basic timekeeping watch. Very beautiful in a lot of ways, but very questionable in a lot of ways. And what I'll say is, the look and design they chose to go with this watch is questionable in a sense because when I first saw this watch and I first laid eyes on this watch, I was simply confused. I was like, why would AP introduce a watch that looks very similar to a department store watch? And I have seen a tr department watch, department store watches ranging from Michael Kors, Movado, so off that have this very basic general design but it is AP, they don't cut corners. You know how they do it. So we're gonna talk about this watch real quick and we're gonna talk about the movement, we're gonna talk about the case, and we're gonna talk about the timekeeping of this watch. And I will say it is very interesting because when you look straight down on it, you're gonna to think to yourself, well, it's a white gold watch most likely. I doubt it's stainless steel and that is correct. It is, it is white gold, but check this out. When you flip it to the side, you have a sandwiched mid case in it that is made out of rose gold 
which is just absolutely astonishing. That's, again, this is where the AP world starts to pull away from the Michael Kors world, because obviously we can sit here and agree that Michael Kors is not producing watches of this nature at all. So when we look at the side of the case, you really get this awesome, modern, sleek design that really brings this watch to the 21st century and really ties it together with modern times as like, you know, the capabilities that AP have in designing stuff really shows off in this watch because the lugs are all hollowed out. One thing I did notice is they have that very famous Gerard Genta octagon shape hidden well within this watch because at the front, it's very much round. But if you notice in the side of the case, it's got the octagon shape kind of built right into there. So it's flat and it keeps going around. So that is a really, really cool thing that's kind of hidden in plain sight. I bet you not a lot of people notice that about this watch. When you buy this watch, and if you own it, go look at your watch because this is an octagon shape underneath this round case. That is pretty cool. And I'll say that is very impressive. It's a sweet little touch that AP kind of stayed true to. So, and you know, when you flip this watch over, you get this really beautiful movement. And one thing I'm sure you guys know, and if you don't know, these case, I'm sorry, these rotors are actually solid rose gold. They're not uh, plated of any kind. And it kind of helps because gold is, a, you know, gold is a heavier metal. So it definitely helps keep the watch wound up at all times because it keeps that rotor moving. Talking about this movement, it is a reference 4302 automatic 28.8 beats per hour. And, you know, the only functions you get with this watch is just the time and date. So, and that's all you need with a piece like this. You might have people mistaking it for Michael Kors, but when you get to slap them upside the head and show them that Audemars Spiegel logo, they will be quiet and rest assured you are wearing the best watch in the room at the end of the day with this piece. And if you're looking to buy the 1159 code, you can definitely find them for roughly around 19 to 21,000. This one in particular, we're asking $19,000 and it's a 2022 model. And I must say, if you are looking to buy this for yourself, this is a perfect unisex watch to share with your spouse or special person because it definitely goes both ways. You can um, definitely wear this as a man, you can definitely wear this as a woman or def definitely however you wanna wear it is up to you. So that's gonna wrap it up for the AP code 1159 and that's going to wrap it up for the segment. And if you guys enjoyed that segment, drop your comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell for me. Thank you guys very much.